There were a few happy moments. I went to the Cache County Fair with my dad and Ashton four days before I was shot, and we got Ashton two little goats. He was so excited. I love Ashton so much. The day before the fair, I had gone for a bike ride and fell and broke my nose, scraped my face, and looked like a monster. I was on medication for infection and pain. Then on Monday, the day before I was shot, I had been drinking again. I had just fallen off the AA wagon. My parents and family were getting tired of it. To them it was, why don't you just get your act together? I wanted to so much. But no matter how much everyone wants you to be okay, it's sometimes not that easy. Alex and I got into a fight. Alex called the cops to have them come to get me so I could sober up. They didn't come, but I got angry and left. I went up Green Canyon and of course I drank some more. I spent the night wondering how I could overcome my problem until 4 a.m. when the dew dropped and I got cold. I called home and my dad came and got me. Later that day he took me to the doctor to have my face checked from the bike wreck and we all talked about getting me back to AA. I came home and Alex and I, my favorite friend and brother, got into it again about my drinking. He had no idea what it was like to live my life. He had not given my parents the kind of problems I had. He had gone on a mission for our church and the worst he did was drink Dr. Pepper and not understand me. I already felt like my life was going down the toilet. I lashed out. I went to my room and started chopping up a chair Alex had made for me. We had a handyman working at our house who called the police because he was worried about everyone's safety. The cops showed up and my dad and one of the cops came to my bedroom door. My dad knocked, but I did not answer. I just wanted time out in my own room. My dad went out to my window to see if he could talk to me. I opened the window, pointed a gun at my dad, and when he told me to put it down, I aimed in the air and shot three times. Why did I do this? I was pissed. I thought my parents had called the cops. They knew I couldn't handle one more thing. Betrayal was the emotion I felt. I was letting my dad know I had had it when I shot out of the window. What I didn't know at the time was that there was a cop in the general direction I had shot. He thought I was shooting at him. Trust me, if I had wanted to hurt someone, I would not have shot three times and missed by 20 yards. The SWAT team was called. I did not know that until two SWAT teams and 30 to 40 other cops had surrounded the neighborhood. I got a call on the phone from Officer Collins at Command Center, which was at my neighbor's house, the one you see in the movie. The things that might interest you are, my mom, bless her heart, knows the cops are there, but has no idea about the intense situation that has started to unfold. I had no hostages. I was not threatening anyone. My mom was in her room upstairs, talking on the phone with her business and friends. You have to wonder, if I was such a danger that warranted 50 or more cops at my house, why was my mom just up in her room, talking to her friends and family? After my death, I was quoting saying things I did not say in the content of the report, making it sound like I was either trying to kill some cops or trying to kill myself. Neither is true. I have to wonder why so many cops were at my house in the first place. Who was protecting the rest of Cache Valley during that time? How many tax dollars did it take to play cops at my house that day? Then the whole incident made a 700-page report for our local team of county attorneys to review. How much did that cost? I have to wonder with all the gear a SWAT team has, why wasn't I gassed out of my room or my door busted down and tased? SWAT teams have protective shields that would protect them from the supposed danger I was to the community. I was inside my room, realizing that there was no way out for me. I called my friends and said goodbye and I love you. I said goodbye to my son. I held his picture in my hand as I wept. There was no good answer for my life. My parents were tired of my problems. I would now get an attempted murder charge because the cops tried to make it look like I was shooting at them. There was no way I wanted to hurt anyone, not even myself. No, of course. Okay. I really, really, I don't want to hurt anybody. Why wasn't a crisis intervention team called instead of the SWAT team? The system doesn't allow for dumb choices, and I am sorry. Fear was my partner. I hadn't been able to get rid of it in the past, and now it was all-consuming. If you have ever watched a surrounded animal with no way out, that was me. I was in my bedroom, where I had gone for my time out, my room which I had used as a safety zone for most of my life. I prayed to God. The answer came that the cops would kill me. Collins kept talking to me. I knew my time was running out. 
I had been buying time for an hour and a half. My sister called and told me, whatever you do, Greg, don't let mom get hurt. I love my mom more than anything. My sister meant well. After all, she loved my mom as much as I did. I felt betrayed. I felt hopeless, and now I needed to protect my mom. I couldn't figure out why this all happened this way. I called my mom in her room because I was pretty sure there was a cop by my door, so I couldn't run upstairs and hug her goodbye. So I called her and asked, why mom, why? Then I hung up. I didn't want them to hurt my mom. I didn't want them to hurt my dog, so I decided to just run for it because at least I would be away from the house and my mom wouldn't get hurt. I know lots of you are wondering why I didn't just walk out the door. Remember the law hadn't ever worked well for me, and with this many cops having guns loaded and ready to shoot, I knew I didn't have a chance. They had no idea what was going on in my mind. I knew I was dead, so I climbed out the window and ran. I looked back to make sure my dog hadn't followed me. I didn't want her shot to. I had asked Alex to get her out of the way, but had he been able to? As I turned my head to see if baby girl was there, I got shot two times, and then six cops took their M16s and put 16 more bullets in my body, a total of eight in the back and 10 in the front. I fell on the fence where for years my family had gone and gathered eggs. Out of the bushes where I had played hide and seek so many times with my brother Alex, came hordes of my local community cops dressed as SWAT members. I gurgled blood, and my lungs slowly emptied. Air would never fill them again. How many of these cops had gone to school with me? How many went to church with me? How many had ever done something dumb in their lives but gotten another chance? How many of them drank alcohol? How many had felt like their families had betrayed them in a time they just couldn't get it together by themselves? I wondered, would they all go away thinking they had done a great justice? Or would they realize my son wouldn't be able to go fishing this weekend with me like we had planned? Or had they just unleashed the beginning of more problems? Is killing the answer we want as citizens for people who are drinking or using drugs or making other stupid choices? Are we going to give permission for one group of boys and men to be judges, jury, and executioners when our constitution says otherwise? And if we give those boys and men that power... Will it happen while not educating the major population of the policies that let those individuals kill whom they think should be killed? I know these cops were following training protocol, but when did this Christian community decide protocol is better than prayer? I had to wonder if these cops felt endangered from me. Did they also worry that they were shooting at each other? It would be interesting for you to see just how close they were to each other as they unloaded bullets all over my yard. Some of the bullets missed me and hit our sheds. One officer was a few feet away from hitting my mom's window and hurting her. Was the real danger for the officers, me, or themselves with their bullets flying in the air in that close of a circle? It's a miracle that one of the cops did not get hurt by another cop. Was that a stupid choice on their parts? After I left my body, I looked around and realized I was dead. I had got my consequences for my dumb choices. Maybe you think I deserve this. Lucky for you, we live in America and you can think what you want. Dead I was, but I didn't want this to happen to anyone else. I went in my spirit form to a lady who could tell my story and asked her to help me. It might be hard for you to believe this, but God sees all and he knows the real story. I was accepted lovingly in Christ's arms after my death. You can believe what you want, but it is true. I want you to hear from my mom and dad and how this affected them.